Zeus to be coordinating them now, losing the coach, dead taking the spot. We're in to our first round, and GG.bet considers FaZe to be at the advantage. A nice spot for Kirby to be setting himself up on if it's an inner finish. The utility here for MIBR, and as we can see, they're slowly progressing into the box halls. We've got two smokes, two flashes, two HEs, and a couple of decoys. It'll be interesting to see if those decoys come on out to bait out any early utility and potential rotations on the FaZe Clan side of things. So you can see here, KNG, this is going to be thrown through. You want these to be telegraphed, so they see them coming through, they potentially call the rotation. And they dip into the site, so just some sound call. That'll get the comms going on the FaZe Clan side of things. But there's no movement. Oh, this is gonna, I, you know, I'm telling you now, this is going to be a, one of these games, folks. No one wants to set a toe wrong. And a lot of utility yet to be utilized. Double smokes, as Hatch has outlined. They're going to be heading towards inner. Guess who's there? Kirby. This could be huge for him. Just dedicated towards that upper side of things. It's Brokey down towards the lower. You know, KNG and the boys making their way through. Flash is good for one. Kirby is still posted up. He is not moving a muscle. And Nico's there in quick oh. succession. Stunners from Brokey. This is sending a message. And now just Taco falls. It's a clean sweep. That's the beginning you want for phase. Clean, crisp, locking it out. Yeah, no plan. Making sure that MIBR can't get that bomb down and stimulate the economy early probably alludes to an eco here for the Brazilian side. Now, they are some yeah. big shots to be hit right there. And Brokey, it looks like he's upgraded from the mobile phone from last season. Maybe found himself a webcam <laughs> this yeah, time round. At least 240p, I but reckon. A, look, a note that we need to make straight away is Kirby feels like he's just been slotted into those positions that BMAS was playing, which is what Olaf was playing earlier in the year. He's holding that inner bomb site. A lot of responsibility. Kirby used to be, you know, a bit more aggressive right. up in the yard when he was playing in previous teams. And he's commented on that. He even said, you know, I've never done an anchor role. It's, it's this kind of idea of mastering it all within the game. And I think that's a nice way for him to put a positive spin on what many would consider a career sacrifice, stepping into this roster and actually having to fill the shoes of not only Olaf, but do it in a passive role. He's about to be tested here, isn't he? Just a touch. Should be a nice little Eco Cobra moment. <laughs> a single penny spent by MIBR. So if they were to get a bomb plant here, it would be dreamy. A missed shot from Brokey. That's the first step to a plant. A couple of dinks with the Glocks and we could be on to summit. Kyobi only gets one. We're cooking and they've got themselves the extra 800 cash. Anything it's a bonus here. KNG's even wicked out the FAMAS. SMG frag would be good. There's range shutting down the rifle threats and they do clean up eventually. They got what they wanted though, didn't they? That's really not bad. Two kills, bomb plant. Chad, that's that's a little bit of a tick in the box, isn't it? And a full eco for sure. That right there is, uh, well, I would say a 10 out of 10 for that round. The only thing they could have done better is win it. Uh, but you don't normally <laughs> we'll let them off. find around. And even slightly sweeter that it's KNG that gets those two kills. Him getting on that AWP sooner on this T side will be beneficial. He's got himself 5.8 coming into this round, so he has got enough for Armor Orb because of those two kills. And one of the things to look out for here is we highlighted it in the previous game from MIBR, but it's how KNG and Fallen both have quite a lot of their percentage of frags with the AWP, which means they're not like a traditional team. They don't have a ride or die, Deddy Orpa. They have two individuals who love to use that weapon. It becomes a key focus for their team. And well, Nico here, uh, not, not quite sure. <laughs> That's how I react when the door rings halfway through a round. I thought that his food had just <laughs> yeah, arrived. Exactly. Yeah, no. Okay, so we're back into it. No AWP coming out. It's just going to be five AK-47s here in the early stages. And Kirby, well, he's going to be tested on a gun round here. He has Nico with the scout up close and personal. They're pressuring this man from the very offset. I guess he could either make a diamond or break him at this point. And it's going to be hard for him to keep up with this. Of course, it's, it is what it is, right? You're on the top tier team. You're going to get pushed, but he's down. Straight away lost. That's going to sting a little here. Not if Nico's hitting shots like Oh! That. Unreal! TRK loses his head as he leaps to Whoa. descend. Fire will equalize. We got ourselves a retake. Rain starting to fight very early and managing to keep it level. KNG's in a tight spot here. Well, Darren broke here trying to play this one back in. Molly comes in, KNG burns. He's down to 21, but he's buying time. Dedicated to the bomb. He's just holding this as long as he can, Molly, for himself. That does hinder progress for Cold Zera. And as the time ticks, the chances look less and less likely for FaZe. Okie dokie, artichokey. Do see the kit? Struggling to close the gap. Brokey's hit another banger. All onto Fallen, yet to frag. Seven ADR, he can win a round on his own here. And he's practically done it already. They need to be defusing now, and he's got it. That was all he needed to do. Fallen, a one versus two for the first of MIBR. Won't get away with the AWP there. Everybody will go down in that round. But unfortunately for FaZe, that retake just took a little bit too long. The Molotovs holding them back, making it more awkward than they 
had originally anticipated in oh, the gun Let rounds. me see that again. Check out TRK. I'm, I'm convinced he's, he's in the air, right? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, you crazy cat. And this was when Fallen had done enough. It was more survival than the frags themselves. They may not be beautiful, but by staying out of the line of sight long enough, they convert. I like what KNG was doing too. Him just dancing on that bomb site, the molly he put down towards the oil train, super nice. Yeah, if he went down early, it would have just been Fallen left, probably over towards those box holes, getting pincered on in by that retake. But you can see here, it's not the full force buy from FaZe. We have Nico on a scout again. Cold Zero is bought into a Famous. Brokey probably wanting to get that AWP up. Then the gun round's coming. Rain is invested as well with about 500 left in the back pocket. This could be, well, I don't know if it's deadly, but FaZe with the Deagles. We saw what they did last season, Alex. Let's see if they can do it again. It's a perfect angle for this. If Fallen crouches into the line and Cold Zera does convert. It looks like Rain is lost in the process and a dink from the Famas may be converted fur out from main. It's all onto Brokey's Deagle and he's done successful work so far. Bomb loose. He shouldn't be able to get away from this. No, he won't. Catches a nade, catches some Galil bullets. And so now the new addition thrust into a dire situation. He knows the bomb was a train. He can float around connector as much as he wants, but it's fur that will be his first task. Well, he's got the old Nico Deagle. That thing's got a history to it. Hmm. And fur does have the bomb now, so... Got to know where that is. Bit of a fake. Draws out the nade. Going to stay nice and safe in comparison to what could have been done with it. And KNG, I guess, was the only real easy target. The softened meat out there, but he's playing it quite safe too. These guys are trying to work for this. Have you ever tenderized a steak, Lauren? I have. It's quite therapeutic. The, with a mallet? Mm, it's nice. Do you, have, do you own a mallet? Or was uh, this like no, a this, was, this was at my friend's house. Okay. Yeah. Damn, I've never... I eaten. never made that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't say that. You know, I've never tenderized a steak. I, I, I was going to make a steak sandwich when we were in Malta, Alex, for us. I never did it. I'm t I'm, I have a strong opinion about steak sandwiches, Chad. Oh, I know. We spoke. You want the you, the little pieces, or you don't like it at all? I mean, unless the steak is coming apart in the meat that would be relevant in a sandwich, where I can take a bite and have a little bit of meat. I can do that. If for I you. take a bite, I pull out the whole half of a steak. This is just uh, a nah, 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 nah. You got to watch some Jamie Oliver videos, man. All right. Well, Jamie Oliver aside, he took away Turkey Twizzlers. So he can get out of here. He did. I loved my Twizzlers. Same. I don't know what was in them. They said turkey. Mm. I'm not so sure. It was mostly, I think it was just water. I think we were just hydrating. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We'll take that. It's two for two. We're into our first map. Second game. Fourth day? Is it? Fourth? Is it already? Yeah. Good grief. Time is flying when you're having oh. fun. ESL1, Cologne, and Fur. Not at all. Having a no regard for the uh, pace of the round. He knows there's what not going to be any utility. Um, so he's just walking on out. Look at the CTs. Kind of fun. This is a very interesting uh, I mean, stack the IV, going on here. Yeah, the war. Oh, fun. I, I, yeah, love it. So I'll try something, right? Yeah, I, I'm curious as well. For those who aren't too familiar, Cold Zero. Hold up, can you make the mop up here? Come on. No. <laughs> Do they stay? They will just stay, right? Ooh. Oh, on the top of the train, he's so loud. Go on, okay. lads. Get one. Come on. Ooh. So loud. Ooh. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Nice kill. We'll put an AK into their hands. It is going to be MIBR converting neat and tidy up against this eco, and I'm saying that with bated breath, as that AK is going to be protected now. Protect the president. Brokey's got the only real justification for survival here. Cold will simply be a sacrificial lamb in survival. Yeah, Brokey. I wonder if he gets. Oh, he's so screwed. How do they possibly keep this AK? Yeah, there it goes. It, it, it felt limited, didn't it? And Cold is going to fall quickly. Kenji, God, if he kept walking down Ivy, then I thought maybe different they could have done something, yeah, right? But no. I, I always like something unique, though, for those rounds. Yeah, we've had the one on the old bomb train that people have been doing a lot now. It's uh, cool to see this one coming on in here. Gets at least one kill. That was damage done, so there was a moment where if they were able to convert with those USPs and the AK could have come online, we maybe could have seen a little bit more of an interesting attempt from FaZe, but the guns will come out here. Mm. This is where they need to start building some rounds. So the AWP will be in the hands of Brokey. Silenced M4 for Cold Zero to note. And then three M4 A4s and utility to boot. Early nade towards the bomb train. Chunking Nico down to 73. And Fallen's already in wow. pop. Rain's taken out just like that. I love the approach Fallen's gone for there. Taking the spawn and taking the pop dog fight. That's like right at the top of the... Uh, confidence play play chart. If you haven't got the confidence, you do not go for a play like that. And here comes more of it. Both of them descending. A bit of a flubbed spray by Kirby's going to cost them the sight. Unless Brokey plays anti-flash. Wasn't anticipating the walk up the cat. Nice work from TRK, but Cold Zero only the first and a nice shot onto Fur into the nose. But still, with 11 HP, Fur lives to fight another day. And Nico late on this flank. If he finds KNG, it's something, but 
I'm afraid this does look like it's been converted beautifully by MIBR. Nico's just going to have to reside himself to the save. Yeah, let me start to build a picture for this for everybody at home. So train on the CT side. What you tend to do is have your inside anchor. His job is basically just to delay and call for information and the rotation comes on through to back him up when it's needed. The other four members are to deal with yard rushes, right? You want to make sure you're mollying man, you're smoking off pop dog. Those kind of plays right there are to stop the T's from getting out quickly into yard and being able to su get, suppress you and get towards that bomb train. Now, if they're going to lose open opening picks and then the inside bomb site is going to fall in this fashion. This is what out of the four rounds now that MIBR have put on the board, they pressured this twice or three times in the early stages. What tends to happen is you need to lean another member over towards that bomb site. Then outside becomes, well, more vulnerable. And that is a real problem here. So if they go towards inner again, they need more out of Kyoby. He needs to be able to lock that down almost single-handedly or get a multi-kill, right? Something along those lines to give them a chance. Because you can see here, not being able to get one frag on top of that low ramp train has opened TRK up. He's now looking uh, hot to trot. And last time round, he only had eight kills over two maps. I, I, I want to see him do well, though. I want to see why this player was brought in, because we definitely didn't see it in that first series. So this could be a really nice time to get a reminder as to what he can bring to this lineup, because as I said, we hadn't seen it yet, but the money, Alex, is um, mm, this not is, nice. This is that graph that Chad brought up and we kind of channeled out, but this is exactly what he was talking about. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Brain? This is exactly what he was talking about. You know, this is the CTs. It, it was USPs stacked in a corner just two rounds ago, and once again, it's P250s with a smattering of Kevlar and Desert Eagle. It's certainly not an appetizing menu. Look at this. Simple stuff. Smokes towards inner. Kyobi's in the back lines. You got the Molotovs. One's going to miss there. That might come to haunt them in future gun rounds. They're going to push up the lanes, try and take away territory, but FaZe don't have any chance in this round unless kills are given up for free. Yep, nothing they can do. Just have to reside themselves. A chance for Kyobi did present. But TRK very quick. And there's more where that came from. In fact, as he advances, he would have exposed his head to Reigns Deeg. You can see the tight ang being held, but... Yeah, this is a lovely start from MIBR. T-side train explaining exactly why. It's their map. Cold with a good shot, and so does Rain. Shouldn't be a chance for them into this round, but I'm starting to get a little nervous. They're getting all the shots. It's a 10-second defuse, but if Taco doesn't hit this, Nico. he could let this slip away. Brokey to babysit. Nico staring. You're right, Lauren. 10-second defuse. They're halfway through, oh. and he's got all the shots. It's Taco, and it's full of beef and jalapeno. It's spicy as... Fudge, it's five to two, and MIBR extend their lead. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Jo uh, I'll even get past Nico's shot to start with, but it's that second one just bangs out Brokey so quick. But maybe more danger than it should have been. Bear in mind, to get to that situation is uh, a little bit scary to me. I don't know who did a worse job there. Obviously, Taco <laughs> did the best job. Right. Uh, MIBR should never have been put in that position, all things considered. And then FaZe Clan losing a scenario one on three. Probably should have converted that one considering the star started aim they have, but it's fast. They're out in the yard. Broke may not be prepared for this. He's actually going to fall off. Nice warning shots from TRK. We'll suppress. And chance to wrap. Already rain going down. It's going to put a lot of pressure. The likes of Brokey and Cold Zero to try and keep something safe, but the line of smoke is just, just slicing down the outer area. Bomb now down. Fallen can maybe shuffle away a little bit. Orb still in hand up close and personal. Two players tucked in towards the con. Flash for and called Zera to try and play out, clear as he goes, loses to Fur, and suddenly Fallen, feeling like there's something coming his way. He suspects that boost so much, he keeps staring at Kyirby's position. Hasn't taken the shot yet, KNG's playing the safe for the plant. Another smoke, MIBR looking such a well-oiled machine at this stage, and just tapping in, TRK, blind as you like, doesn't matter, Brokey's head is now gone, and Nico's once again forced to talk about the safe. TRK may not let him, but Nico, We'll take the shot and fall to a safer line. This is now six on the T side of train. All right, gang, I was just talking about the ebbs and flows of the CT side of train and what can happen if you lose the inner bomb site. Look what happened this round. Nico, normally a yard player with Kyirby going towards the low ramp. That means we have a passive hold on, on yard. We have rain and connector there. We have two players in the back line, Brokey and Cold Zero. But meanwhile, look at this. TRK is already out. The smokes are up. They get free yard control here. And that's all because they've been punishing this inner bomb site. There's not enough members to stop them from getting out main. And this is great from MIBR. Stand Standard calling, but it's working very well. Right, you just saw the the adaption being made and a different strap being called. It's just fallen, living in Faze's head at the moment. We'll see this again from TRK. So the first was lovely onto Kirby, and the second just making the assumption Ugh. and connecting. Great assumption to be made. And yeah, I, I, this is the thing. You know, there's there's a reason that we. 
you know, love what MIBR used to bring. There was something very exciting about the way they called. They got into opponents' heads, but we, we just need to see more of it, right? Like, that's that's always going to be the kind of baseline. This is very much me just kind of observing where these two teams are at because they're both in such a state of flux. It feels like you've got, you know, changes on either side, stylistic problems coming back in and forth. So, for now, though, MIBR are making it work better, I feel. Yeah, for sure. And I didn't want to come in here with that game that we saw at MIB the other day and put them in that box and say we were going to expect that again. We know there's more fire in the belly here and fire again, straight out main, Molotov towards Ivy. Love it from Taco. Look how much space he's managed to take off the back of his own utility. Now his teammate Smoke aid him even further. Look at the wall of smokes they've managed to manufacture and again, first blood drawn. This just feels like a one-sided affair. Cold does claw one back with one of the two preserved rifles. Kirby needs more than his previous, he's only got two kills. Uh, one dig would put them back into that even keel. Not to be. The confidence is just pouring through people like Taco and TRK right now. His success in the last round just made Taco just fly out there as well. Nico and Cold Zip. Okay. Okay. Taco's, Taco's on one. You know. That's the sidekick just punching Batman in the face right Literally. there. Literally. Robin's, Robin's, Robin's had enough. off his underpants. He's just pinged him across the room. <laughs> Well, Batman, though, has something to say about the matter here in the form of Nico, isn't he? He's uh, a 1v2 bomb is planted. And oh! he's, he's making it look good, but it's all for nothing. And this game, Alex, it's it's starting to scare me a bit, boys. I'm, I'm a bit worried. If I'm Yanko, I'm doing the, uh, the timeout signal. I guess it's online, so he probably just has to type pause. Because look at this. We're already on to round 10. This game is at a blistering pace. It just started with MIBR bullying the inner bomb site, the new boy Kirby. Some nice shots from Nico. These might help his confidence, but the fact that he has to in-game lead now and be the guy getting the lion's share of the frags, that's not what we're looking for right here to kick things off and the frustration starting to creep on in. We need a show-stopping round here, Alex. Yeah, it used to be a big problem for Nico in the, when he was having a good game and his team was losing. That tended to you know, be the downward spiral into yeah. a series. He's definitely matured and I'm sure he'll be able to find a way to keep them consistent, maybe even get them back into this half. It's only halfway gone. Seven to two, the score into our 10th round. And the first blood drawn this time by their ex-teammate, Cold Zera, has taken down KNG. But Fallen's going for a walk. Cold Zera's still on this, bear in mind. Just tucked back it. Oh! Fallen's done him. He's absolutely done him. Through the legs. Uh. You're going to love to see that. Fallen's probably happy with that too, especially onto Cold Zera. Equaling things up, but there's still so much more presence from the T's. Nico now going to be feeling surrounded, feeling uncomfortable, but Rain helps out. Taking down Taco allows a little less pressure to be mounting. Cold Zero playing Ivy the same way he did when he was a member of this Brazilian roster in the past, meaning Fallen, one of the masterminds of the game, has a very good read on how to deal with him. So that's a huge opening here. But it still is a three-on-four situation. Nico's timing could be fantastic here. They won't be anticipating it, but Rain loses his life just before he could pull the trigger and a fast trade from Fur. He's definitely had his cornflakes this morning. Yeah, we need to get Kellogg's on the phone. That would be a sick sponsor. We just have to say, has had his cornflakes once a cast. Easy. I'm Ooh. repetitive as it is. Yeah. It's Take in. money from it. Why not? Uh, <laughs> fallen, though. The last two in this. Uh, bomb yet to be planted. That's Fallen right now. And it could be quite a nice position for Kirby if he commits out of pop. It looks like Fallen's trying to toy with that idea. Kirby is there. And there's the timing. Nicely done by Kirby. I'm going to rush it, but fur in the 1v2 now. This feels so doable. Got the shot. And converts onto Brokey, he can okay. disappear now and a puff of smoke, no it's Kirby that has to find him. And you're right, no kit. He's going to have to try and fake it and draw the fight and win it immediately. First got great line of sight onto it, so he knows Kirby hasn't crossed. He's done it. He's running out the clock. Kirby's taking too long. As soon as he didn't see him on the bomb, he knew that he was tracing. He was trying to, you know, just walk around, find him and first. Fur has absolutely wrapped him around his little finger and gone, yeah, nice try, mate. Made him look like a right twat here, hasn't he? First, just doesn't even have to go for the frag right now. He finished him off with the headshot, and that's going to be round number eight on the board here for MIBR. This is blistering stuff, and what we were expecting on day number one from their international debut with TRK, we're getting it here against right. FaZe. That extra fire in the belly of going up against Cold, you know? You left us? Sorry, right. what? You know how everyone is starting to learn and find their own way to accept that Counter-Strike will be online from now on, and they have to kind of change their mindset? I think for these players especially that are so, you know, no strength stranger to stages and trophies, I think this additional pressure of the human element is actually going to give us some really good counter-strike out of both of these teams. I think this additional pressure is that reminiscent of a land stage. We've got a different type of pressure, but it's all the more present. 
There's politics involved, folks. Humans, we are fickle and emotional, and it will affect every aspect of your approach to this game of Counter-Strike. It is now into the 11th round. And again, towards Inner previously, where they managed to accrue a lot of their uh, early rounds here on the T side. I feel like it's the 11th hour almost for FaZe, though. Two rounds just... And, and the way it's been going, they have been manipulated and moulded by MIBR on this T side. And, and I don't expect that. Again, I've not seen FaZe in a while. So this is me catching up, and I don't think I like it. Rain... Gonna just take anything off the back of Nico's cup. Oh no. Oh no, it's gone terribly wrong. Um, and that feels like the half here, boys. I, I don't know how else I can spin it to ever look anything other than a little bit of a battering. Yeah, this is really problematic early. I, I didn't have high hopes for Kyobi joining the roster because of roles here, and the fact that they're trying to slot him into a brand new out of ESO1 Cologne online, there's always going to be some teething issues. But Cold Zero, hold up a second. This could be the showstopper I was talking about. Yeah, you said you needed one, and Kirby is there alongside him, unfortunately unable to manifest any success. Taco, clean again from Cold Sarah. He's on for a mad one here. Three scalps first, trained on the location. He will not let it slip away. 12 for first so far, over 120 ADR to start off this T side. If ever there was a side you needed fur to be at the front, it is that attack. Great signs of life coming in from the king. Ooh, I want to be getting excited for this matchup, right? We built it up. It's meant to be a bit of a grudge match. There's lots of history between these two teams. Obviously, the Yanko previously is the coach, Cold Zera, with these guys when they were winning those trophies and majors. But the start to this, Lauren, it's flat. It's not yeah. exciting at all. And this is the thing. I know MIBR fans are probably losing their minds thinking this is sick and why aren't we super excited? Because this doesn't feel like a huge test to them. It feels like, as I said, MIBR are doing everything right, but we need to see that fight back from FaZe to really understand that there is a bit more to them to kind of, I don't know, create that value between the two. For now, though, it is a very enjoyable performance, I guess, for most MIBR fans, seeing them in this position up against someone like FaZe, like Cold Zera. Yeah. But as I said, the game itself is going to come down to moments like this, and Kiebi needs something more than that. He's trying so hard to make something happen and nothing is coming of it. Oh, exploiting that inner weakness again. They find the Achilles heel and slash it as they arrive into that B site. Again, forced to save. Just nothing they can do. The three players you see now for FaZe, I've just had to do nothing. They have they have no options. They have done exactly what they were supposed to. This is train. I, I, I'm already seeing the future at this point. Give it right. a couple months. Kirby's well, going to swap, swap roles with Rain. Rain will be. Rain will have to off. start doing all the anchors and yeah, stuff. You're right. Kirby will take over the entry fragging. Put him positions. in pop dog. Put him in. Yeah. I don't think it's going to make too much of a difference. But uh, look, this is very early stages, right? I'm. Uh, yeah. uh, I, I'm hyperbole. Yeah, but if I'm right, we'll come back to this moment. Hello. And we'll say, look, Chad's a genius. Oh, they're actually. He's almost giving me an aneurysm just looking at Rain holding an AWP. I don't think I've, I've ever really seen him find an AWP frag. I think that's his fourth career AWP. I think you're actually not that far off. I'm going to go and double check oh, that stat because look. I remember we were talking about uh, Phase's AWP distribution in the last season, Alex, and we had that lovely, uh, yeah, that's I what say I, lovely, that's ugly from. pie graph. Pie chart, yeah. Yeah, and uh, he had like just this slither compared to everybody else on the team during Six one period. Or nine, it was something tiny. Oh, bless him. All right, so I have to jump straight back into the fact that Kirby's been dropped the M4A1. He's been rocking it with the M4A4. And Cold Zera's there to support him this time. Let's see if Cold can change things a little. Fallen staring at that pre-peak. Last time, I think it was Nico came over here. They hit towards A, of course, yep. and it really threw him through a loop. But this could be the right read. We'll see if it does continue to go this way, but they seem super aware there could be someone on it. Because I see Fallen on the other side again. Fallen seems to be reading this very, very well, but it's yet to come through and uh, Rain's been removed, so more and more pressure building. But Brookie's here too. Have we got both orbs on the right side? And it doesn't seem to matter. They didn't expect Cold Zera, but they've taken down Brokey, and Cold Zera is the only factor holding back four T's right now. Oh, he's trying to get down in time and he just delayed a little too long. TRK is capable of punishing. It's nice to see life in the fifth. Very quiet in their debut. And Kirby, the newest addition, will claw one back. Cost him a great deal. Have to save. I, mean, like I know they need rounds, but they have. They, they, you're not getting back in. The inner bomb site's locked on out. They're going for gamble plays. Having two orps holding the inner bomb site that smells of desperation. And I guess it is pretty desperate when the yeah. scoreline's about to tick up to 11 to two. Now I just had a quick look at those orp stats for you, Alex. Okay, hit us. Now in his career, right now this is going all the way back to the start of Rain as per HLTV.org stats. Only has a hundred. 
and 15 op kills, right? That's very in total. That's over. Could you give me a comparison to maybe someone who occasionally might pick up an op? I'll grab you a Kenny in a second, but I'll in 2020, that. Rain has only four op kills. So that's his fifth. Oh, he's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Damn it. Nice. Congrats, Rain. All right. Uh, do you know the funny thing? Rain was, is still probably one of my favorite players to watch. Like, do you remember him on Nuke when that there was that one like pillar or bollard out there yes. that you should just do filthy things from. Like I, I, I love when uh, Rain has a good one, but this, this isn't it. Rain this is, is the embodiment uh, of the safe pair of hands rifler that every correct. team wants. Every team needs that 25 frags, makes the good calls, doesn't rage human. And he does just seem so stoic, yeah, doesn't he? Exactly. And I, I think that's something you need in victory and defeat. It's uh, a, a, a voice of reason. We're into our 14th then. Nico's trying to contest outside. He was expecting to see some drama and he'd be right to do so. They've already got an AWP established into pop. They do seem to get a lot of freedoms early on into the piece, MIBR. Nico trying to contest into... Oh, there's so many fights. Nice from Nico. Takes an AWPer out. He could get traded here. He anticipates the peak. I think he saw of the barrel. It could have been the tip. Taco's there for the trade as well. He's hunting. He's going to walk straight into the cross. <gasps> Spots him. This is intense from Nico. He is essentially 1v4 at the front of this fight. He's given it some, isn't he? He's got rain behind him, but nice. it does feel like Nico's on an island right now. But they're holding back the flood, maybe with just what feels like a piece of paper at 2 to 11. But it's it's doing the damn best. But for now, the T's seem to have taken a pause for a second. Fallen trying to maybe take some stock around the map. And he pushed from Ivy to be seen. After seeing maybe Nico or that up close and personal, you're a little bit cautious now. But it feels like they've got a plan in mind. Certainly. Here's the pins pulled, playing anti-flash, another flying above him. My goodness, Nico. He's in a prime position. Oh. The nade lands right on him, but it's not going to stop him from pulling the trigger and doing damage. Him and Rain connecting into two, all on Taco and Fallen. He's looking for the last one. Rain does shut him down, and now all onto Taco. He's got the time to play with. He can come up Trump here. A one versus four quickly become a one versus three, but Cold, element of surprise and a must win for FaZe is brought across the line. Three to 11. Oh, yikes. All right, if they're able to get themselves four and they win the pistol, they're able to convert, then we could be looking at seven rounds. Once we flick on over towards that T side, they win that first gun round. They're able to put MIBR back down to eco. We know that they spend a lot of money on the double ops. That is the only way that FaZe can really start getting back into this. But three within the first half, the CT side, a very CT biased map is not enough. So four, still not enough, but the best they can do right now. And here they've got the guns out. Dead. Oh, Brock, he just... He just, he just caught a good chunk of damage off that, but no quick pacing from the T's this time. A little bit more of a look towards Ivy. Nico definitely made a step there. Fur's well aware that he's up close and personal. So it just comes down to the mouse and the click. Who's going to be doing it first? You are right about this Nico situation though, Alex. Look at how much responsibility he has to have because they need to play two towards the inner bomb site now. The radar on your top left, you can see that Kyobi has a buddy over there and that will be Brokey. And that means that Nico almost single-handedly has to worry about main and pop dog. This setup you're seeing Brokey Kirby use is very popular at the moment amongst CT setups when they feel they need an to lead an extra player forward. Kirby's just tucked in on that corner and Brokey scoping up on the back. But it's an Ivy push and oh, Nico's actually gone aggressive. He catches the lurk and Cold takes one down for his troubles as well. Nico's put on the backpack, hasn't he? He's gone, right, if I have to make moves, if I have to be the instigator, I will be. And so far, it's worked very well. These slightly more audacious moves are coming out. Yes, he's on 18 HP and he's kind of in a bad spot here, but he's still being proactive and holding back maybe three players. You think, I think Rain's there as well, but the smoke's keeping back Brokey, for example, keeping him humble, Nico again. May have just got a glimpse on Fur though. This battle has continued. The HP was already gone and Fur just instigating himself so well into the matter. 20 seconds though and Rain could be vital this round. I love the decision. He's looked at the clock. He knows that survival is integral. Brokey, he didn't get the memo. Great shot from Fall and Rain's responsibility. Ah, uh, is he going to make the move? He wouldn't. It's a fake. Oh dear, oh dear, Fallen is having a great game. He's doubled up, Fur finishes it. It's a 12 for week. Are we Gucci? We uh, something. Look, I'm thinking map two definitely going to be on the cards here very quickly. I think the MIBR, once upon a time, their CT sides using the core of this roster was phenomenal. And here, well, KNG up close and personal, CZ75, using that to its, uh, well, greatest strengths. Quite well, a favor the start here as well. That's going to be pretty devastating for FaZe. This is one of those that they, they need the first. There's no Too real late. other way. 
to freeze it. Normally, there's there's that kind of window, and well, there we go. Trade comes in. Kenji does go down, sure, but Taco instantly quells any sort of maybe bounce or leverage off the back and furs there to catch Kirby as he falls down towards Pop. And yeah, TRK's a little isolated, but they still have fur there. It's like Kirby was trying to do the smart little ladder juke and kind of flubbed it a little. Ended up just staying, staring at the Pop Dog CT. And speaking of the CTs, they have actually been dwindling down, fallen long range with the P2K, and so's Taco. Two members of the MIBR core, then SK in 2016 and 2017. Those trophies residing behind them in pursuit of another. And that chance will be removed from them should they concede this series. If you have just joined us, this is FaZe Clan MRBR. It's drama, it's Counter-Strike EastEnders, and one of these teams <laughs> will not continue at this tournament. Thank you, Lauren. <laughs> Love the backing ground. Backing ground? <laughs> no, I don't know. Backing vocals. Well, look, Nico was trying to do a lot of work there in that first half, right? We saw him having to take a lot of responsibility on his shoulders, and here he has a one-on-two on the pistol round, and this by MRBR sticking together, making sure he can't go towards the inner bomb site. Now that you can see that there was only... 15 seconds left on the clock. They know it's going to be Yard. Nico's not tucking back through CT spawn. If he goes to plant on the side of the train here, they'll be able to spot him out very, very easily. Planting safe, so at least he's giving himself a chance, but Fallen has a molly. Bomb now down. Fallen oh! Says goodbye. Crisp, clean, just easy as it goes. Honestly, Fallen's having a bit of a tear himself as well. He's had some big kills this game. But look at the kill distribution right now on the side of things for MIBR. It's a fantastic team effort. Everybody's fired up. Everybody's showing what they've got here. Taco's had some rounds. He had that 1v3 clutch within the early stages of the first half. You also have to think about TRK. Entry fragging, out main, getting it done, hyper aggressive, finding kills through smokes. And then the regular boys, KNG and Fallen, we expect a lot from them. They're the two higher rated players in the team. And then Fur, a star of the past for these guys, the third highest rated for MIBR. IBR since the addition of TRK. Well, he's topping the charts with 15 kills and 115 ADR. So, oh, the plant, it's going to help them get a buy on the board here for FaZe. AK-47 for Kirby, one for Brokey, Galil for Rain, Scout for Nico and Cold Zero with that deadly deagle, but they need to start making something work. Yeah, it has to happen sooner rather than later, and that's not going to help dead. matters. He's dead. Yeah, oh. Nico, ooh, one HP. He's, he's, no, he's not dead, Chad. What do you mean? He's alive and kicking. As is rain, at least. Fur and DRK receive the pointy end of the stick. Or I guess the end of the blood. It sounds better as a I stick. I like the stick. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That worked. <laughs> Shut up. Fallen. <laughs> now, finally, Nico's going to cook. Is he? He's just been sitting there with his knife up this whole time. KNG is going to procedurally clear this one. And that's the thigh. That's the confirmation. And that's just one in pursuit of closing this gap. And again, they do it. My goodness. Finally, Rain will claw one back for phase. But Fallen Scout was doing damage. Was being the past tense. Brokey's insured of that. 1v3 for Taco on the wrong side, wrong side of the map. They will be taking their time. Rain, a triple kill already. A quick smoke towards the connector. This is looking indicative of a plant and a very, very impossible retake. I mean, MIBR was so in their faces that round. Look at where they all died. Look at those X's on the mini-map. They, 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 they were pushing it. I mean, they still had the leftover SMGs. They're maybe trying to make them work, but they've got rounds to get in FaZe's head. And if your FaZe is probably quite tricky to not be a little frustrated with how this game has gone so far. So Taco, the 1v3 in front, it's not really looking uh, viable. With the second one in the game, though. I'm going to stay with a little bit of faith here, even yep. though it's likely he doesn't even go for this round. Just sees if he can find a couple of frags onto phase lingering. He doesn't have a kit. My brain is struggling to process what weapons they had there, Chad, because like MIBR, they just won the pistol. Mm. Then we saw phase force in with their Galils and Deagles and what was it that the SMG, like what were MIBR bringing in? I mean, I know that they were fighting, they were duking it out. Well, the two players who pushed in the main, they didn't even get to shoot a bullet. So I'm not quite That's sure what exactly saying. what was in their back pockets, but this is, I suppose, the uh, dangerous side of the new economy, right? Is the mm. T's tend to look like they have a better buy. Uh, and if you are going to go that aggressive into main early, I, I would have assumed it was SMGs. It was remiss of me, but I didn't actually take too much stock in their weaponry. I thought more so that it was the phase ones, which was tickling my fancy. Kirby only four kills. Only four frags for the boy. Here you go, SMG. And Famous. Famous, he looked Famous. Or an M4, one of the two. I, I feel for Kiev. I mean, the thing is that most sensible people will give it time. Brand new role, you know, new team, barely any practice. 
This could be a little bit of a stat padding that could help. But you, you pinch assault these sort of deals, but you can also see the benefit of when you do have those nice performances to start with. It can be such a relief. It, you know, it, it kind of gets the monkey off the back yeah. almost. No, absolutely. Something you've got to just try and shake off. Get out, get, get out of your own head. The less you try, the more you succeed. There is all these weird kind of uh, outcomes. Compared to competition. There's there we nice go. Shot. He's going to get another yeah. Another chance at least. TRK is the one to remove it from him. So, phase towards the inner side. Let's see how well this one is held with just the Desert Eagle. I love the spot from Taco. Does find the head of rain. And now for, he's in a bit of a tight spot. You're going to jump on this, right? Yeah, they do. All right. <laughs> I, I see a second if they don't. I'm like, what? But no, too, too smart, too aware. And TRK, okay, good to see him having a game. And as Chad nicely highlighted, everyone was having a good performance from MIBR. But honestly, considering what we saw in the first time that we got the glimpse of MIBR, he was very quiet and, you know, as I said, new player to the roster, hadn't seen too much of him. Good to see him stabilize. We've seen that bit of aggression now coming into play. He's making a bit of a personality for himself. But this is stabilizing for FaZe. This is, I don't want to say road to recovery because it's, it's very, very early. But it's a round on the board and a well-needed one. Three still stand. It's... It's around. Yeah, and if we want to build it up here for the betterment of the series, it's important that FaZe can warm into this game, right? Now, let's just assume that MIBR walk away with the victory right here, but if FaZe make it close and they make MIBR start to get frustrated and have to work, that builds in for the second map. It also allows the FaZe players to find their footing in today's series. Yeah. It is the elimination game. There's a lot on the line. So if they're able to, to just get their uh, juices flowing, get some highlight moments, you know, for a few individuals, a couple more nice deagle kills coming out from Cold Zero, maybe Nico getting a nice spray down or a couple of taps, Brokey on the AWP finding a multi-kill or two. All of that will help build into Inferno, which will be map number two and followed by Dust 2 if we need it. That uh, M4 for TRK will be the primary weapon in play here for MIBR going into round number 19. FaZe have just gone for a default spread. We've got two players over towards Ivy. TRK is just going to get up and over that Molotov, one over towards Inside, which is called Zira. And Rain and old mate Brokey in team main. I want to see a concise round, Alex. I want it to look like we're on a full buy up against pistols and one rifle, right? Absolutely, and it does look like you're getting exactly what you asked for, Lauren, because Nico and Kierby have arrived from their IV ventures, and, well, TRK's proven where his M4 is with a controlled spray. We'll opt for a fresh magazine for more bloodshed, but Brokey may not let it happen, and now it's just Taco. He'll be caught in a retreat, 2 HP with just the USP. What he can do beats me. Right to the head, and that's 13 to 6. Phase. They convert what they needed to at the start of this half. MIBR on the pistol, and then a slew of three in response. So that's puts Phase at 6. That 12-3 half did feel like it did almost permanent damage to the uh, Phase chances in this one, but remains to be seen if the MIBR boys can break the back now. They're bringing out all the good stuff. Fur on an MP9, though. I do get a little nervous when I see MIBR on CT sides because of what we saw in the previous game with the double AWP reliance and sure, what right. can happen to the economy. But I'm really not worried for now. I mean, you're that close. If we start seeing the economy constantly broken, Chad, I guess that's when we have to really pay note. Different picture, I suppose. With that one AWP in Fallen's hands, Fur on the MP9, that means he's going to have to play up close and personal towards T main. Teak uh, K is the partner in crime. And once again, they want to push into main. So Flash will come through. Nice little nade there, going to land on the toes, doing a big chunk of damage, but this is just the normal flirting at the start of the rounds. What have you got? What are you showing? How much leg? No bit of ankle, at least. I like the shoulders myself. Dirty pervert. Can't believe you'd say that on a broadcast, Chad. Shoulders, you nasty boy. Aggressive move. Without the disadvantage, this is peculiar. I wonder how far they'll commit to this. They've got a lot of information if they turn this corner, but Brokey with the AWP, no less, is about to peak. He can't believe his luck. There's another, and they're both gone. Surely One more. accelerates. He's going to jump straight into first MP9 if he doesn't have his teammates. I'm concerned for Brokey's survival here. Yeah, it didn't make sense. He got double kill. It's safe to assume the site should be clear, but far he'd rotated in, and this round is not a guarantee. But Nico, the fox, kind of in the... Kind of, I guess, hen cage at this point. He's right behind them. That's TRK gone. A is completely open. Now, of course, we do have fallen work in the way around the old bomb train, but up to hand, is he aware? Does he predict? Does he check? Does he do it well enough to get Nico? No, he doesn't. It's Nico's success and space he found that is equated to the round win. Beautifully done by that man. And we saw it on the CT side. That single-handed effort he put in to try and capitalize and make a couple of these rounds kind of turn their way. And to find that room here was just quintessential to another one on the board. 
So the saved orb is a key. Fallen did get that opening on Kirby through the smoke at the start of the round over towards Ivy. So, oh, maybe he won't hold the orb. The chase is on. Fern now going to do his absolute best to stay alive here towards the end of Bombsite. But all three angry FaZe Clan members are in hot pursuit. And there it goes. Rain will pop off his head. Scavenge the AWP. That'll be back in the hands of Brokey going into the following round. And now, yeah, that... Uh, tumultuous task of the CT economy really starts to come into play here. Those were very clutch AWP kills there from Brokey. And since he was given the primary orb role within this team, he's really started to flourish. When they brought him in, they had him more in the lurking positions. It wasn't working out for the squad. Olaf was doing the primary orping. Brokey obviously was a rookie at the time, having to be on the T sides, going for clutch plays. Not his forte, but since the roles have changed, clutches have gone up in his stats column right there. So for MIBR, we'll just be the pistol upgrades again. A couple of deagles P250s to boot, and they really have a affinity with going towards T main here. Once again, Flash comes out, nobody's home this time round, and that might force FaZe to quickly take this in a bomb site. But they will need to be quick about it because the CTs, they'll start rotating over any moment. Oh, he missed the Flash! And look above you, great shot from Taco, nearly took a second. Now, not in a rush to get that bomb down. The rotate is coming in fierce, but only with the Deagles on Fur and TRK. A P250 much less potent at this kind of range. Have to be careful. Utility-wise, I'm seeing Molotov starting to be deployed, but Nico just lost his life. Perhaps this isn't an open and shut case after all, Lauren. No, this is something that Aze's dreams would be made of, be able to make some pressure out of this. But how do you remove those last three players? The Molly Steer and Kirby, no smoke on the other side. It's, it's, it's looking unlikely, but Molly goes in. Is there anything they can do to get around this? Is there any more damage to be done? Molly was perfect. Oh! And he got the ladder together. Good defense. They won't let the AWP fall out into the wrong hands, but there's no time for the defuse now. This is just about frags. KNG wants another. And they do find it in the end. Well played. Not only to FaZe Clan for starting and continuing to run away on this T side, but MIBR take four weapons away. That's going to keep the T's honest at least and could have ramifications as we get to the business end. We're not there yet. But all the same, it is time for the full double AWP setup. We talked about their yeah. alliance, Chad. We talked about their affinity with it. And so if they do get caught out by a fast play here, retaking with two AWPs is a nightmare. Yeah, and look, it could be towards the inner bomb site they want to go. We saw the Gambit play from MIBR in the previous gun run where they had the two individuals pushing and further as the safety net. But with the flashes over, it looks like Kirby's fast out main. Oh, I want to see something good here, Kirby. He's got a lot of space to work with. Fallen's trained on his location, though. If he can just stay stationary for a while, that's powerful. He just looked like he's been caught through under the, under the train. It was TRK's speculative shots. So denying Pop Dog. They've got a player out outside, and now they can continue to advance Brown Halls. If they go for this hit, this could work wonderfully. It's Taco and KNG. KNG's eyes trained towards the upper side. Let's see if anyone shows out. Kirby's not being too subtle, keeping a lot of attention still trained this way, but the double swing, double face, beautiful flash from first. It's a PRK, but here comes the hit. Over towards B we go. And as Taco did get one, it just kind of leaves a bit more room for KNG to try and make a play happen. Actually pushing into this, but Cordzera just shuffling out on the top side of things. He's going to see a little bit, but not enough. He didn't see anything. They were so focused on the close. Now KNG reveals his position and Cold, he's going to get overwhelmed. MIBR with their first weapon round off the back of the double orb. I'm surprised uh, Cold was able to stay on that high ramp for so long. Didn't really worry MIBR after all. But this is where the problems have to come in for FaZe Clan, right? They're, they're T-sides. Look, when you look, talk about a map like Nuke, they obviously have a lot of different approaches. Train, it's harder. I think it's a bit harder to show different looks, and they haven't been able to set a tone or a pace like MIBR did within their first half. The orb's out in Brokey's hands. He's going to need to see if they can find him an opening. The smoke's towards five lane. E-Box flashes over the top to feign what they were doing. KNG towards the low ramp. And as the bomb starts to scuttle through the box halls, could be a B finish right here, but they will need to push back Taco and KNG. Flash now and taking the fight. Kirby wins it. That's a big scalp to take. The highest fragger for MIBR gone and extended now by Rain into the inner side. Oh, that was a risky fight to be taken. Cold spotted on the cross. He knows there's an AWP staring down that oil alley. He spots the toes, takes his shoes off for him, and that's not the finish he was hoping for. 
Kenji is so bold. I kind of like how he plays. But as it's called Zera, the man is so brave and he's so good to back it up normally. But KNG keeping the crown this time. With the bomb planted, it continues to tick. And now look at his positioning on the flank as well. Kiebi's position could be vital if they need it. But for now, he bides his time patiently playing. Waiting for... Ne oh, no. No, 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 no. They're going to defuse. You can just oh, hold Christ. it. Oh, no. God. Kiebi, that's a no. To concede. He gave them the cue. It was an intense situation. A hard shot to hit when they're facing the other way. I'm with you. But that is not going to feel good. Silence in team speak, I think, will be the play after that one for oh, the phase side of things. Yeah. <laughs> that leaves a mark. That leaves a big That's mark. horrible, isn't it? Like the sound cue, the comms, he's out of his chair, fall in love, that one. I think they had one after that. I don't know. They're around ahead of us. All right, well, <laughs> phase, they have to fight here now. Zera in the pursuit of glory. Kirby's already lost his life, and yet maybe you're bang on, Chad. Looks like they want to finish this one quickly. KNG's already found another, and train is over. MIBR, they take their map pick. They came to play today. They're on the ropes. Want to phase an MIBR.